Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and welcome to this episode of the Forsaken Westerns. Up next, we have our star Mark Stevens in the Knave of Hearts. Mark's character left town years ago to seek his fortune, and now he's come back to claim what he believes is rightfully his, and that's his girl. But as he will soon find out, time stands still for no man. We have two of the best Western bad guys in this episode. One of them is just seems to be a bystander, and that's Lee Van Cleef, which is usually not the case for him. But super bad guy Jack Elam plays a big part in this as you'll soon see. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and watch and enjoy this wonderful, almost forgotten episode of Western Television. And we'll see you after the show. As a young man, Steve had left the town of Willow Rock without a dime in his pockets. Now, after eight long years, he was coming home. Home to the raw, untamed cattle country of Steve Dexter's youth. A country where only the strong could survive. Yes, he was home at last in Willow Rock. Home to a well-remembered dream. And something he wanted to forget. Got a room? I reckon, maybe. What's the bet you got? Five dollars a day in advance, and it ain't worth it. Good, I'll take it. You must be a tender for All right, I'll see you. Steve! Steve Dexter! How are you, Bob? Steve, you idiot! You trying to get yourself killed? Good pup's got him a cash customer. Two cards, Alice. Looks like mucho cash. Uh, the wrong color. Next time, Andy. Deneen? Oh, please. Dealer takes one. You're bad, Andy. Come on, bet I'm gonna throw him in. Yeah, what's the winter rest? That's Steve Dexter. Dexter. Here comes Mark Warren's ramrod. Oh, I know there was going to be trouble. Uh, something you wanted, Deneen? What are you doing back in town? Renting a room. Any objections? Yeah, plenty. Give him back his money. You're leaving town just like eight years ago. Sudden. Who says so? You're Mark Warren. I'm saying it for him. He told you once to get out and stay out. It's a free country. Not for you, it ain't. Don't that this range of Derringer would blow you wide open. Nobody but a tin horn carries a sleeve gun. Tin horn with a yellow streak. still dealing. He bluffs easy. Yeah, I take it you ain't got no sleeve gun. Don't approve of him, Pop. Well, me neither. Uh, well, come on, I'll take you to your room. I got it. What's that all about? That's right, Steve was before your time. He used to be sweet on Mark Warren's daughter. Mr. Warren run him out of town, huh? Nobody never runs Steve nowhere unless he wanted to go. No, he left on his own. Said he was gonna pick up a pile and come back here and marry Laura. Told Mark that right to his face. Well, by the looks of his clothes, he made his pile all right. I wonder how. He didn't do it betting on cards like these. Press. I kind of feel sorry for him about Laura, though. He waited too long. That? 
Dos. You mind if I ask you a question, Steve? Shoot. Why did you risk your neck coming back to Willow Rock? Don't you know? Uh, Laura? Mm-hmm. Eight years is a long time, Steve. Yeah, I know, Pop. A long, lonesome time. Well, it was just as lonesome for her as it was for you. Lonesomer, maybe. She was doing the waiting. You got something on your mind, Pop? Well, I reckon I ain't doing it very good. But, uh, well, you can't blame Laura. You being gone so long. Blame her for what? You remember Johnny Scoville? Oh, no. He was just a button when you left. Well, he grew up to be a right nice young fella for a homesteader. Maybe you hadn't ought to unpack, Steve. Make your point, Pop. Laura and him are getting married. I am going to marry him. And if you interfere the way Laura, you get... Laura, can I see a minute? Boy, I didn't hear you knock. Did you, Laura? Sorry, Mark, but I thought you wanted to... My daughter and I were talking to Neen privately. I'll send for you when we're through. No, Laura, you cannot marry Johnny Scoville. I will not allow it. You can't stop it! Look out this window. Any window of the house. Thousands of acres, thousands of head of cattle. All ours. An empire I created. Emperor Mark Warren. And what happens if men like Johnny Scoville get a foothold? My home said the land that's always been open range. They put a fence around it. Our herds go hungry for the grass, thirsty for the water holes. That's why we drive these farmers off before they can put up their first fence post. We fight them or they destroy us. And you'll want to marry one of them. The country's big enough for all of us, Father. Farmers and cattlemen. Farmers grow wheat. Wheat makes bread, and bread is just as important as beef, and I'm going to marry Johnny Scoville. You'll get over him just as you got over Steve Dexter after I drove him away. You did not drive him away. He left because he wanted to make something of himself. And if I'd been really in love with him, I'd have gone with him. You wouldn't have dared. At 17, maybe not, but I'm not afraid of you now, Father. I know what you really are. And what am I? Mark Warren. A while ago, you said Emperor Mark Warren. And you loved it. So will you someday. When all this is yours, when you're... Empress Laura. I'd rather be Mrs. Johnny Scoville. Warren's a merry trash. Trash can be disposed of. Is that the way you want it? Then watch yourself. Because if anything happens to Johnny, I'll know who did it. Remember, Father, I've got Warren blood in me, too. You said you had something to tell me. What was it? Yeah, guess who's back in town? Steve Dexter. Well, this is a surprise. What does he want? I don't know. I guess he just wanted to show you who's boss. He even run me off with a sleeve gun just so he'd know he's on the prod. That's too bad. Now we'll have to take care of him as well as Johnny Scoville. Outside. Well, if I was you, I'd leave it there. Matter, Pop, you think I've forgotten how to straddle one? It ain't that. The Warren Ranch ain't no place for you right now. How'd you know he's going to the Warren Ranch? Well, I just figured, don't you understand? There ain't no use in talking to Laura. She's got her mind made up on Johnny. I want to hear it from her. Wait a minute. Maybe she won't have a chance if her packy puts a bullet through your gizzard, him or Deneen. Wait. You better take old Betsy. She's awful light on the trigger. Thanks, Pop. Close this one.
doing out here? That all you can say after eight years, Laura? And you can say you're glad to see me? Of course I'm glad to see you, but you shouldn't be here. You look good, Laura. I haven't changed a bit. Or have you? I don't know quite what you mean. You and Scoville, is it true? Yes, Steve, it's true. Steve, I... Funny, I kind of pictured things being a little different. When did it happen? A long time ago, Steve. A, a very long time ago. How's Mark taking it? He's still Mark. That's why you shouldn't be here. Riding Scoville like he rode me, huh? Worse. So much worse, it scares me. What's the matter? Can't you reason with him? Reason with him? I even threatened him. I must have set him back some. It did, but it won't stop him. I know him too well. He'll get rid of Johnny so no one will know he even had a hand in it. Unless he should find himself up against somebody bigger, and there's nobody bigger. And not that Johnny isn't a fighter. He must be. Homesteading in cattle country. That's just it. He's a nester, and there's nobody to even side with him. And my father likes nothing better than picking on a man who has no friends. Johnny needs a friend, Steve. I bet he does. Steve! Will you help me? Johnny and I want to get married. I, I love him. How do you know? Steve, I... I'm sorry you made me do that. Sure you won't sit in, Steve? I never play cards with friends, Pop. Why? Unlucky? Never with cards. Up to you, Johnny. Call. Three kings. All yours, Dallas. Sixty-five cents. If I could do this every day, I wouldn't have to work for a living. Well, I've had enough. Come on, Steve. You can't lose more than a dollar or two. Except on Saturdays and Mark Warren sits in. This Saturday or Friday? Friday, why? Mr. Warren's a day early. Oh, howdy, Mr. Warren. Oh, I wasn't expecting you. Now, look here, Mr. Warren. I'm not a dog you heard around with a stick. Of course not. I like dogs. What he don't like is Nestor's wanting to marry his daughter for her money. Scoville, for the last time, stay away from Laura. And if I don't? There'll be one less sod buster around here. It will bust your sod, six feet of it, and plant you in it. You see him start to draw first. Wrong, didn't mean I drew first. Put it away. Put it away. And leave it there. Look out, Steve! Losing your grip on things, Mr. Warren? No, not the big things. I wouldn't call this big. Prodding a man to draw so you can kill him, I'd call that pretty small. Honing in on my personal affairs, I'd call that pretty dangerous. I'll keep it in mind. Hold it. Uh, Mr. Warren, you and Deneen want to join us in a game? Cards is awful soothing on the nerves. Of the kind I get, Pop. Always quit while you're ahead. And let them think they scared me off. I have a good mind to go in. Wait till you're holding a better hand. rubbish. Money ain't worth it neither. No use staying with nothing to stay for, Ash Dean. All you win's the exercise, Andy. And a start to death, Kitty. You know, this is the first good hand I have today, and nobody bets. Fine bunch of tin horn sports. Speaking of tin horns, ever notice how some fellas stand around and watch the game, don't ever buy no chips? Everybody, Andy. Must be a case of flashy clothes and empty pockets. Or perhaps a poker game wouldn't interest a 
real gentleman. Mr. Warren, your bet. I got a quarter. If it'll bring any new blood into the game, I'd make it $100. I guess there ain't no use in asking you to sit in, huh, Steve? Steve has got a rule he don't play no cards with his friends. That's right, Pop. Not with friends. Give me a thousand dollars, Pop. Should we make it table stakes? As Mr. Warren said, the game needs new blood. I'm not going to take it anymore. But Steve seemed to... Just because he backed me up today, that's no sign he'll do it again. Laura, I'm fed up. Let's get out of here. It's no good to run away, John. I'm not running away. Laura, how would you feel if your father killed me? Oh, you know that without asking. And if I killed your father? You see? Just thinking about it, and you don't want to look at me. We'd never be the same to each other, Laura. We couldn't be. Do you want to risk that? I don't want anything to ever change us. Oh, Laura, let's get out of here before it's too late. Maybe we should, Johnny, but let's stay just a little longer. This thing has got to be settled for once and for all. Look, Laura. Shh. Five hundred and raise it five. Come on. Five hundred more. Call. It's queen high flush. Aces. Four. Best pot tonight. Most three thousand in it. Gang near. You notice how he won it? Stayed on a dead man's hand, aces and eights, and then draw another ace. I'm sure nobody here wishes me bad luck, but it's all the same to you. I'd like to finish the game somewhere in private. That is, unless you aim to quit before I can get even. Did you put it that way? How about my room? Suit me perfectly. Come on, Denim. Catch me and pop. There's your money, Mr. Warren. I wasn't planning on keeping it. A tin horn always says that when he's caught cheating. I counted the deck on the way upstairs. It's one card short. Get his gun to him. You got your money? And you got the missing card. You held it out to use any time you might need it. Do we have to search you? It's a very clever trick. One of the easiest I do. What are you trying to prove? Nothing. You've had it coming for a long time. The chance is too good to pass up. Come here. There's something I want to show you. You were born in this town, Dexter. You've seen a lot of men hanged over there. Too many. It's our way of dealing with your kind. The minute I tell the men downstairs that you hold an ace, that rope will be around your throat. I've been waiting a long time for this hanging. Come on, Tin Horn. Ah, oh, I'm in no hurry, Deneen. I might even let him go. I wonder what would be best for this town. A live card cheat or a dead nester? I don't savvy what you're driving at, Mark. You do, don't you, Dexter? You mean Scoville? I want him removed. And you're going to do it. I am? How? There's a poker game downstairs tomorrow afternoon. I want Scoville in that game. I want him framed for cheating. Afterwards, when he's exposed, Laura won't be able to blame me. And if I don't? Then you'll get strung up. Right now. Scoville's neck or mine, huh? Make a choice. I take it you'll be sitting in on the game. Yeah. Supposing I decide to frame you instead of Scoville. Who'd believe anyone as rich as Mark would be playing crooked poker? 
Yeah, I suppose you're right. Oh, Mr. Warren, it looks like you're holding all the aces this time. Well, why should you? And why should you talk him into playing in the first place, especially against my father and Denise? A lot of things can be settled over a poker but table. But Johnny's not good at gambling. He's a big winner with you, isn't he? Yes, Steve, he is, no matter what anybody does. I can't beat a hand like that. Yours, Johnny. You're lucky you're in a barrel full of horseshoes. Last time I seen that kind of luck, turned out the fellow had a rabbit's foot in one pocket and five extra aces in the other. Stack them on your own time, Scoville. Sure deal. Oh, sure. Andy. being 10,000 ahead is all right. You mean he's winning? Most too frequent. Appears to me like he just can't lose. strung up? Break in your pot, Johnny. You had the best honest hand. It didn't work, did it, Mr. Warren? All right. Get her old! Mr. Warren to keep him in line from now on. Yes, but what's going to happen to Steve? Steve always could take care of himself. He kind of fixed things up for you and Johnny, too. Yeah. I'm sure going to miss him. And he won't ever be coming back this way again.
What a wonderful Western television show episode this was. And what a shame it would have been for it to have been buried forever and gone and never seen again. This episode had some great stars and some early roles. And we're very happy to have brought it to you here on the Forsaken Westerns. My name's Bob Terry. We hope you'll join us again next time here. Have a great day.